Welcome to the Delight Your Marriage Podcast, the show where you hear from amazing and inspiring wives sharing their struggles, triumphs, and advice for this journey called marriage. Here's your host, Bella Rose. Hello, hello. This is Bella Rose. Thank you so much for turning us on today, the Delight Your Marriage podcast. We come out every Tuesday, and I want to thank you so much for spending your time with me today. Now, I want to share with you an iTunes review that we received. I love reading the reviews. It really encourages me. But this one says, for such a young podcast, the depth of content and beautiful vulnerability shown by Bella and the guests is unparalleled. This subject matter is so important and every marriage needs to hear it. I can't wait for new episodes. This is the very first podcast to hook me. Well done. So thank you so much for that. That's just an awesome review. And thank you to everyone that has reviewed before because it really makes a difference not only to me, it encourages me, but it also makes a difference on iTunes and how we are on the charts. So a review is so, so helpful. So thank you so much for doing that for me. All you have to do if you haven't yet is go to your on your podcast app, search Delight Your Marriage. And then once it pops up, type click on the episode and then click reviews. So thank you so much for that. That's awesome. Now today we have a wonderful show for you. I get to interview Jennifer Ferguson and she has just such a beautiful heart, a beautiful spirit. You'll listen and hear just how much she has gone through, but then also how she's come through it holding on to Jesus. And I just love the example that she gives for us. But she talks about a really serious subject, pornography, and how that addiction in her husband's life, how that affected her and her marriage. And I wanted to make sure I interviewed Jennifer because I think she's got a story that can help so many people because so many are struggling with this. I've had women reach out to me and tell me this is exactly what's going on in their marriages. So listen in. I think Jen has got some amazing insights for you. All right. Well, welcome back to Light Your Marriage Listener. I'm thrilled and excited to have Jen Ferguson. And she's actually going to talk a lot about um, To God Be the Glory, which is her website, but it's pronounced something I'm going to let her pronounce it. So (laughs) welcome, Jen. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. Yes. um, I host a community of women called the Soli Deo Gloria Sisterhood, and it's Latin for to God alone be the glory. And and basically, it's a place where um, we have women's stories ranging from abortion all the way to just w- walking with God and or feeling apart from God in, in the hope that a woman would come to this site and, and with her burden and, and know that her burden is not hers alone, that someone has journeyed with the same burden before her and have found hope and rescue from Jesus. So it's just a place where people can come get a big dose of hope. Oh, I love that. Yes, that's just so good. You know, I was talking to someone um, just yesterday, a good friend of mine, and I was telling her about some difficulties that I'm going through. And I loved the way she just listened. Mm -hmm. And she just let me Uh, whether I was crying or just, you know, having my moment, she just let me. And I think that's a, I think that's a moment you can realize that someone's really gone through suffering is when they can hold you in your suffering and Mm -hmm. say, yep, just let it out. Just let it out, which is so healing and so good. Um, so that's beautiful. Now, um, Jen, would you go ahead and introduce yourself, your family, your day-to-day life, what it looks like? My day to day crazy? No. <laughs> <laughs> As we all are, yes. Yes. Uh, well, I, Craig and I, Craig, my husband, we've been married for uh, 15 years and we have two kids. Um, Abby is 11, just started middle school, and Hannah is nine and in fourth grade. They're 18 months apart. So uh, I feel like we have just kind of traveled as this little unit <laughs> all together and now they're in different schools. And so they're kind of forming their own identity. And, um, mm. Yeah, Craig and I have walked a a good road, but a hard road, and, uh, you know, it's really influenced how we parent and how we um, even try to shepherd our kids' friends and and knowing the importance of who Jesus is and why uh, we need his radical transformation in in our lives. So Mm. that I basically uh, blog and um, 
and disciple women in, in the hope that we can really impact not only our generation, but our children's generation too. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's awesome. Um, can you tell me a little bit about you and Craig's personalities? <laughs> we are very different. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, we were sitting at the, um, the dining room table the other night talking about how different we are because our kids are very different. <laughs> And, um, and we said to them, you know, what would it be like if you had two people parent you that are just like mom or two parent p- people that parent you just like dad? And they were both like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> would either be hyper organized and super, you know, tending toward the rigidity, rig- rigid schedule and, and expectation or it, the house would be a total disaster and everything would be a free for all. <laughs> So we were just showing them that, you know, God puts people together that complement each other because neither one of those extremes are beneficial at all. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, when you're only living in that, they, they have their gifts and they have their downfalls. And so it's, it's God to bring harmony into, Oh, once you get there, (laughs) you know, you want to realize that your way is not the only way. Um, It really does balance out the family. So uh, I, awesome. I, I'm the type A. He is the relaxed uh, <laughs> one. <laughs> yes, I love the complimentary thing. My husband and I are the same way. It's just it, it just would be crazy with with both of us being the same. And <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I totally agree with that. That's awesome. So so I'd mentioned beforehand that this podcast is really all about inspiring wives to really live wholehearted and uh, in their intimacy and in their marriages. So would you be able to share a scripture or a quote that's meant a lot to you over the years? Uh, yes. Hebrews ten twenty three. it says, let us hold t- uh, tightly without wavering to the hope that we affirm that God can be trusted to keep his promises. Uh, wow. That really... Uh, being the type A and just how I was raised, I thought it was my responsibility to fix everything and keep everything together. And yeah. um, and so when I was confronted with my husband's porn addiction, mm. my first response was to fix it. And yeah. it's not only to fix him, but clearly to fix myself, right? Because I thought that he was using porn because of me. And I, cause I didn't, mm. I didn't know at the time that that, that there was not a direct connection. Um, yeah. But, you know, when you find your husband looking at women on the Internet, you for, you assume right. that you, it's your fault because you obviously, right. you know, are don't have, you know, the boob size or, you know, waist size right. or right. friskiness in bed or whatever. Um, right. And so I knew that porn was not something that I could live with. And... Mm. Um, And so I just thought because I was the one that didn't want it, I needed to get it out. And I did not, on the surface, I I think I turned to God in the sense that I prayed, Lord, help me, help me through this or Lord, heal him or whatever. But it's one thing to pray the prayer and then leave it at the cross. It's the other thing to pray the prayer and walk away with the burden that you brought with you. Right, right. And and that's what I did for many years. Uh, is carried mm. this burden around and tried to untangle this huge mess of uh, just sin and, and my sin and his sin, you know, because yeah. we both bring it into the marriage, right? Everybody does. Right. Uh, right. And so when that verse has just meant so much to me because when, if you go back to the the Greek text, the, that whole concept of can, we can hold on, is it's like we're wearing a life jacket. And we can say, mm. you know, if, if God's hope is our life jacket, um, then we can really get through any storm. And yeah. it doesn't necessarily change the storm. The storm is still there, but he promises to be with us in that and uh, bring us through it. Mm. Yeah, that's powerful. I That's definitely a verse that needs to be meditated on and for me, for sure. That's <laughs> That's powerful. Well, can, I think you started to tell us, but um, can you share about a difficult struggle in your marriage and, and, and how you've kind of come through it? I think that, you know, obviously the porn was, it, it was a huge blow to me uh, personally and, and in our marriage. But I think that what it boiled down to is Craig had a porn addiction because he had holes, bases in his heart that only Jesus could fill. And, mm. and what it re- made me realize is how much I was clinging to control to, to try to make myself feel whole and secure. 
And, yeah. um, you know, the thing is, is that we can try to hold, if we hold tightly to everything and we think that it's all in our hands, you know, you, our, mm. our external situations might seem like they're okay, but internally we're just crumbling because we weren't made to hold the whole world in our hand. We weren't made, mm. we weren't made to orchestrate, orchestrate the lives of our husbands or our family, even though that's what the world kind of tells us that it, it is our responsibility as a wife and as a mom. We're, we are like mm. the CEOs of our household. And, you know, we say those mm. things kind of jokingly, but when you think about like the burden that that yeah. puts on us, and, and how that that manifests, that, that burden manifests in our lives, we just end up cracking. And so no wonder, like, we feel at the end of the day, like, broken or, or, or even pulled in so many different directions. Like, how can I possibly continue to keep up at this pace? You know, what if? What if I drop something? What's that going to look like? And I, and I feel like the process of going through Craig's porn addiction has yeah. just, God just showed me, look, Jen, I really... I've got this. You do not have to um, structure your life so that you you and everybody else is okay. Like that's my job. And when you yeah. when you hold on to everything so tightly, you choke out the growth. You know, because yeah. I can't see mm -hmm. what it's kind of like. You know, sometimes we just have to let our kids fail, and that is so like hard. I mean, especially mm. for me, I don't want my kids to fail, but. Hit, what if they go through life when they're young, never experiencing failure? Like what when the, yeah. they hit the real world, I want them to know that God is going to be there, but they need to practice that when they're young and relatively safe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. Same thing with our husbands. If we're trying to control and manipulate everything, where does God have the entrance in their lives mm. and in our marriage? Mm. Yes, I love that. When we're trying to manipulate or control everything, where does God have the space? Right. That's powerful. So so can you tell us a little bit more of the story? So when you found out that he was looking at porn, I mean, what was that like for you? I you, I had the first year we were married, I had suspicions. Um I never okay. saw anything, but like just and I'm a pretty intuitive person. So like when I would come around the corner, he would immediately close the window on the computer or, you know, okay. there was like a stain on the chair. We had a cloth chair and, it, and then there was this random pay-per-view charge. And so <clears throat> I had all these suspicions, wow. but it wasn't until we, our second year of marriage that I was on the computer looking something up and he forgot to clear the history. Oh. And so I actually saw what he was looking at. And he was home at the time, and I called him in, and I was like, what is this? And he immediately was like, I'm so sorry. You know, it's just a one-time thing. It's not a big deal. I promise I won't do it again, whatever. And because I didn't understand, the, really, the concept of addiction, mm. and because I did not understand that there was a thing called porn addiction, yeah. um, I was like, okay, all right. I mean, I'm hurt and I'm like, and of course I, and I went internal with all of my, like, Oh my gosh, I'm not good enough. I need to lose weight. Mm. I need whatever. Um, but it, it wasn't until mother's day after our, both of our kids were born, Hannah was six months old that he, I had gone to get a haircut, which was a big deal because we had very little money. So like to spend anything on, on ourselves was just, it was just a big deal. And so mm. I had gone to get a haircut. And the, um, when I got there, the salon was closed. And so I drove back feeling very disappointed, but um, oh. I, I opened the door and Abby was my oldest was watching TV. And like, it was so loud. And then I, but I could hear my other daughter crying in the bedroom. And I thought, Oh, maybe Craig was changing your diaper or whatever. And I go in there and she was all by herself. So I pick her up and then I turned um, and walked down the hall and I saw the study door closed. And that was like, I just knew. And, and oh. I just knew what he, and it, it was, it blew my mind because I was like, okay, so now this is not, cause I had caught him a couple of times in between there and now, right. Or then, yeah. uh, the first yeah. time in, in the mother's day. And I was just like, this is not only wrecking our marriage, but now it's interfering with him being able to be the father that I knew that he could be. And yeah. so, um, I walked in and I was like, I, I mean, I just couldn't even, it was, it was awful. And, um, yes, yes. So he obviously shut down the computer and came out and I handed him the baby and I just went and cried in the bathroom floor. And I was just like, Lord, what 
And, and I'm really mm. excited. Like, what, the, what the hell did you do? <laughs> Why did yeah. you think that this was going to be a good idea? You know all of my insecurities. You know, you know, my parents got divorced right after Craig and I got married. And, and just I mm. watched their marriage disintegrate you know, over two decades. And I was like, I wanted more than this. And you did not, you failed me. <laughs> yeah. It's just a very raw, honest conversation. Yeah. You know? And because at that time, like like I said, I didn't know that porn was really a thing. I mean, I knew it was a thing, but it was like a CD, like not your average person does this, you know? Right. That right. rocked my world. And then to know that this was something he could not control, like that he kept going back to, no matter what I had done, no matter what rules we had put in place. Because, you know, when I first, when I realized that this was continuing to be a problem before the Mother's Day event, I, we set up all these rules, right? Because what do you do when yeah. you want to control a situation? You create rules so that mm. then therefore there will be some sort of, you know, incentive to to not, right? Like if they're rules, right. you know, and it, I just did not realize that part of uh, human behavior, I guess, or really the rebellious streak in Craig and really that by implementing all these rules, like coming from the top down, like from me down, he felt right. like totally parented, you know? Yeah. And, um, anyway, just after laying on my floor and praying and saying, God, like, I don't know why you did this to me. And will this, this is never going to get better. God just said, okay, you know, do you want to do it my way now? And I was like, oh, yeah. And at that moment, it was just mm. a supernatural moment where I realized how I was trying to play the savior. And I realized like how exhausted I was and wow. that I did not have a cure for Craig's porn addiction, that I would never have a cure for Craig's porn addiction because the cure for Craig's porn addiction was Jesus. Yeah. And two things, like, number one, I cannot be Jesus to Craig when I'm all in my own head trying to control and manipulate every situation. And mm. and if I am not surrendered to Jesus, how can I really reflect that to him? And cause I, yeah. because of my own hurt and my own, you know, sense of betrayal, I was reflecting my anger and bitterness. And it didn't come out every day. And it didn't come out like, necessarily in conversations about porn, but it came out sideways. And when he didn't do the dishes, or he didn't do this, or he could have done that better, you know, it was mm -hmm. all, all that bitterness was based in the, the porn addiction, but I couldn't, I didn't know how to talk about it. And, mm. and it was almost like I was afraid, well, if I if I bring it up, then he's going to remember that he's an addict and want to go back to watching it, you know, um, mm. it was crazy. But uh, I don't know. I just I feel like God did such a good work in allowing the porn addiction to continue to come to light and um, to, to not allow Craig to continue to live in that not only that sin, but in that place of despair and desperation, you know, he, right. he escaped because he didn't understand that he, it was his own issues of self-worth and his own fears of rejection and his own um, inability to deal with real life when it got hard. And so there, yeah. there was obviously a need for Jesus to be able to rescue him out of that hole and show him that there was a better way because the world of porn is so dark. And there's so, yes. so much despair and it's, and, you know, it leads to a disruption of everything good that God created sex to be. Um, yes. And, and not yes. even just for the marriages, but for the poor women and men trapped in this sex industry and, yes. uh, and the tra sex trafficking and everything. And I know when I knew at this time that Craig is a person of integrity and he didn't yes. even, he, because he was so trapped up in that physical sensation and that escape world. He, he 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 didn't equate it to real life. Like these are real people being devastated by this industry. And once God right. started pulling him out, like he realized, oh my gosh, you know, I would never mm. want my wife or daughter trapped in this. How can I support? How can I view something that is so against what God intended creation to be? Right, right, yeah. A couple of things I want to ask you. Um, one was when you said you had no idea the concept of porn addiction and it being an actual addiction. What did you mean by that? I think I didn't understand that people could be addicted to sex. You know, mm. I, and 
I was 19 when I met Craig and, and I just didn't have a whole lot of worldly experience. You know, I felt, I guess I led a really sheltered life (laughs) in in high school and in the, and I was only in my second year of college when I met him. And so I just hadn't been exposed to that world. And, um, and now I, and I feel like now my kids are so much more, it's so much easier to fall into that because now because the internet is so popular. I mean, I remember going to college my first year and getting an email address. Like this was big news. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now, you know, my nine year old has an email address. Um, mm. And so the the world of internet porn and, and, and even, you know, I feel like that is really what continued to entrap Craig because no longer did he have to go to like the video stores. Right. And, and right. people see his car there or whatever. Um, and, right. and anyway, and so I just feel like that just made it so much more accessible. And with any addiction, the more you're exposed to, you know, it's like an alcoholic, the more you go to bars, the more you drink, the more entrapped you get. Right. Yes. And, right. and I just didn't realize that that could happen with sex and, and it, but it makes right. total sense because you're, when you're having sex and you, you know, have that sexual release, you, your body is releasing hormones like crazy. Right. And so right. you, you get that dopamine and the serotonin and all that feel good stuff. And, and just like alcohol and, and drugs, like you want it more and more and more. Right. And if you're not using it within having sex within the context of your marriage, it's going to destroy you because it's just like with drugs, like you have to do a little bit more heroin or now you need to add Coke or now you need whatever. The world of porn has many different levels. They're all bad, but they just get yeah. darker and darker. And, and yeah. So, yeah, I think that's really true. And I think that's important for a wife who has found out that her husband is doing porn or has done it in the past, that this is more of a chemical release than anything else. Right. Yeah. Um, so you also mentioned that there's not a direct link between actually having sex and being addicted to porn in terms of solving this issue. So when you were saying that it started to feed on your insecurities to make you think like, why am I not good enough? Or is our sex not good enough? Or that kind of thing. And, and how has that changed for you in in terms of thinking about this? Well, I think it was really helpful for me to realize that Craig's porn addiction started even before he met me. And, Mm. and so he, he was using this like, so what I, what, what I think is really important to understand is that porn is not about, Sex, porn is about fantasy and escape and control. Mm. And so now it has an impact on what God created sex to be in your marriage for sure. But Mm. Craig wasn't, he knew we, I mean, he knew we could have sex. Like it was available. But if you think about why men start pursuing porn, it might start out as this innocent, you know, a lot of boys, 8, 9, 10, 11, see porn and it's a curiosity thing but because of you anything that has to do with sex is so precious to god that satan is really intent on destroying that and the purity yes that goes you know the purity and the intention and, and everything if we view um marriage as the uh, symbol a worldly symbol of christ to his church like that is a powerful symbol yes. of what a man and a woman are created created to do and be like and how they're supposed to reflect Christ in the world and so anything that Satan can do to destroy that he's going to and so um so I I think that porn has a direct of course in my my mind because of how the world views women and treats women it's like okay clearly if he's having to go over there then you're not good enough and so you're not good Mm. enough because you don't fit this mold that every guy supposedly likes right and so And so anyway, but Craig was saying Craig wanted to go into the porn world because there he wasn't afraid of being rejected. You know, there he could do whatever he wanted to do and didn't have, you know, there were no repercussions. He he calls it like acting like a man, but without having to really be one. Right. Mm. You don't have to take any ownership of what you do in this fantasy world. Right. It's just kind of like this freedom to be who like and try on different personalities or whatever, but it's all in this fantasy world. And so even if you have sex all the time in real life, right? Right. It's not fulfilling this desire to escape. 
Mm. And that's what they, they're doing in this porn world is escaping into this life without responsibility, without, you know, um, emotion or whatever. Like, it's just this feel good place. And, and we haven't, you know, <laughs> most women will tell you, like, sex is not just a physical experience. And I think for men, because of what sex has been taught or how sex has been taught, it's supposed to be this feel good physical release. Well, then, but when you're married, you have have all sorts of emotions and um, intimacy issues and all of that that you have to work through too. Right. And so it's a gift, but you still kind of got to work at making that gift enjoyable. And sex, mm. whereas porn is a very selfish, I'm just going to get what I need. Right. Yeah. No, that's so good. I, I love that you said, um, you know, porn is not about sex. It's about fantasy, escape and control. Right. Um, and the other thing I love that you said, it's, it's gives the oppor- gives a man an opportunity to act like a man, but not have to be one, right. which is so key. So if you think about a wife that's just found out about her husband's addiction, can you give her some steps or some ideas of what to do next? You know, the first thing I would say is to not only talk to God about it, yeah. but find a safe, trusted friend that you can talk about to talk with it too about it with right um, right sorry. And, no it's fine um because you naturally and and have the right to feel betrayed like he has stepped out of the marriage covenant and yes like he could say well at least I didn't go you know actually have an affair or I didn't actually talk to another woman or whatever but he has had a sexual relations outside of marriage he has engaged in that act even if it was only you know himself and a computer screen and so I just want to validate her first and say yes you are right to feel wrong and yes this is hurtful and yes um you need to be able to have a safe place to deal with your hurt and anger and bitterness yeah and then um and then I would encourage her to have a conversation and say, hey I, hey, I found this, or hey, what do you think about this, or hey, this is my suspicion. And, y- you know, the, the less, I think it's important to communicate that you feel hurt and angry, but to communicate yeah. that in a way that's productive. Because um, yeah. I, I made so many mistakes in just lashing out, and it's, And you know what? If you lash out, you lash out. Like, there's got to be grace, right? Because this is a hard road to go through. And you're going to say the wrong things, and he's going to say the wrong thing. But the importance is to um, come back to this commitment. So I would say, you know, if if there's not abuse, and if there's a willingness for your husband to try, um to overcome this addiction with Jesus' help, like, stay in it. I mean, this Craig and I went through this for over a decade, and it is mm-hmm. a long process, but there is hope and there is healing. It is baby steps. And, and, I want, and I think it's so important for wives to remember that porn is a hole filler. And, mm. and so if they can imagine their husband's heart just filled with holes and how he's trying to pour this porn in these holes and it just runs, straight through right because porn is worthless like it is it is not anything that is actually going to have substance to make a heart whole Mm. and one of the things that really helped me in understanding I I had to wives have to be able to or ask God to please help them remove themselves from this situation a little bit like there's got to be some separation even though I know it attacks the core of the marriage of this of the marital bed and sex and everything but this is his issue. And if, if we can find out how we try to fill our holes with things that don't hold, don't lead to hold heartedness, it is so helpful. Like I used food to right. make, make myself feel better and to, yeah. and to fill this longing and this void in my heart. And so I had this really awful relationship with food and it wasn't until God brought me to this place of like, okay, so this food, how's this food thing working out for you? Because mm. I see you, you might enjoy this for a moment, just like right. Craig enjoyed the porn thing for a moment. But then you feel so guilty and so ashamed. And so right. I just, why is I'm, if your husband knows Jesus, there is going to be like some shame 
involved <laughs> in this. And even right. even if they don't know Jesus, like I don't I don't know, but it doesn't. It, porn was not. We were not created to, to desire this kind of sex, uh, you know, sex or, or right. fantasy or escape. So right. most of us, even if we don't know Jesus, have a moral compass of right or wrong. And it, and mm-hmm. I love how um, sex trafficking and, and abuse has being put more and more in the in the media spotlight. Because yeah. the more we can understand how devastating this is, not only to marriages, but to our society. Right. You know? Right. Um, so I'm kind of getting off the thing. I just want, I just want the wives to hold on. Because yeah. if we leave our husbands because of porn, when, I mean, what, we're, a lot of wives are going to be leaving their husbands. <laughs> because right. it's so right. rampant. And I just, um, if you can ask God to cultivate a sense of compassion in your heart. And it took me a long time to get there. Like I wrote in the book, um, about, I was the prodigal, I wasn't the prodigal son. Craig was the prodigal son. And I was the older brother being like, why are you, <laughs> why are you mm. getting all of this? Right. I didn't have yeah. a whole lot of compassion, but, but it, as God started revealing to me my own issues, I was like, okay, like this is really not that different. Sin is sin. Sin is separation from God. No matter what the yeah. sin is, we have different, you know, uh, consequences for different types of sin in this world but at the end of the day with God like sin is sin and it is separation and so we need to choose to re- move into repentance and we everybody in in all marriages or even non-marriages has to has to deal with the consequences of sin in our right. lives no that's great I, I I think your point there is really to have a wife to see the long the long vision yeah, and that right. this is a temporary uh, suffering, absolutely suffering. And I love that, you know, your website is an opportunity for wives to share their stories Mm -hmm. and to, and to have support in that. But this is also very temporary. Thank you so much, Jen, for being so open and vulnerable with your heart and your experience and your lived out wisdom. And I just want to encourage you listener just in case there might be a friend that you have that could benefit from this episode, I just want to ask you to share it with them. Because yes, it's a hard to talk about subject. It's taboo. Yes. But it is infiltrating every part of our society. Our society is so saturated with lust and pornography. And I just want to wonder if there is some wife in your sphere of influence, in your circle, who's dealing with this exact thing, there probably is. So I just ask you to consider sharing it. Okay. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you on Tuesday once again. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Stop by delightyourmarriage.com to check out all the show notes, as well as many more resources and articles. Until next time, live with love, wisdom, and passion.